Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ray's Kitchen. I'm Monique. I'm Ray. Oh, excellent. I'm in charge of the food, right? Oh, yes, yeah. you are. You, yeah. you are. Hey, now, welcome, everybody. Really great to have you with us here tonight. We're making a fantastic recipe, which is an interesting choice for this time of the year, Ray. Soup. It's uh, one of those, is it a soup, is it a stew sort of Ooh, things, you know, like really that. thick and chunky. I like that. Um, yeah, um, Kiwis think soup is only ever eaten in the winter, and yes, it is a really comforting and warming dish, but uh, you go to any other culture, they eat them all year round, and with this one, as you will see, the point is, is that once you've made it, you turn it off, you leave it for 10 minutes, make a phone call, you come back. When it's cooled down a bit, that's when you eat it. Because it's so it. hot today. It is. It's yeah. been incredibly humid, but I can feel the temperature cooling. So this is a great recipe for this time of year as yeah, well. Yeah. Now, are potatoes yeah. kind of in season? Because that's one of your key ingredients. Um, yeah. They're kind of in season all year round, aren't the they? Most time, yeah. There's nothing very much in this recipe which is expensive we like or that. weird. I suppose the weirdest thing is the preserved lemons. Mm -hmm. But you could just use the peel off, you know, the zest off of fresh lemon if you ah, wanted to. Ah, that's what I was going to I should ask get onto you. this, and I'm just going to throw the first lot of things. You do this soup in two phases, okay? You do a bit of frying, then you add the chunky things and the liquid, and you boil it until everything's soft, and you have soup. Oh, we like that. All right, so one, oh, four. Now remember, because we're live, you, we, I can see all the feeds. So hello, oh, hello, Natasha. Nice to Natasha. see you watching. If you've got any questions tonight, uh, either about the recipe or if you've got your own culinary challenges, send in your questions. We're more than happy to help. That's what these shows are all about. Right. So what are you doing Four first? tablespoons of New Zealand extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Four cloves of garlic. Whoops, sticky, lovely sticky garlic. Lots of sugar in that. And an onion, which I'm going to cut now because... I don't want to uh, let it oxidise and go sour. So I already have a question. Yep. How on earth do you cut onions and not cry? Because I've done it for years and years and years, and okay. I think I, you know, haven't got many tears left. <laughs> I save the tears for important things. Oh, perfect, you know? excellent. Yeah. Now that garlic already smells amazing. Yeah, How that, is that possible? Well, it's, just, gar it's garlic. Garlic, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody loves it. Natasha's well, just said, "Hey, hey, Natasha." And also, hello, Elizabeth Jury. Now, Elizabeth Jury commented on the post on your Facebook page today. She's also making soup at this time oh, of year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, make, I make soup all year round. It's great. Yeah. Italians never eat soup, like, you know, when it's boiling and just comes straight off the, the um, stove. They will always let it cool down, because mm. how can you eat it anyway? Yeah. It always tastes better. Hey, Liz, what soup did you make today? I'd love to know what you're making. Yeah, I'd like to know. Hello also to Dawn Koberger, Amanda Rattland. I hope I said that right. Baz Big Man and Pravina Milo, who are all watching tonight too. Nice to have you guys with us. Okay. All right. How so, do you chop so finely? Because I've practiced and practiced and practiced for okay. years and years and years. Yeah. It's all it is. As I always say, you could probably train a chimpanzee to do it. Perfect. So you there's know? hope for me. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Does it matter with the size of the knife and things like that? This is the knife you use for everything except, Just that. except peeling. And when you want to peel wow. something, you might, you'll use a little knife. But you should be able to do everything <laughs> okay. from mincing the garlic, as I've said before, from mincing the garlic to cutting the pumpkin in half with that. Seriously? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where did you get that knife from? Is it a particular knife? This is a beautiful Japanese knife. I think I've talked about this before. Um, okay. That was given to me. I've had that knife for 15 years. It's been wow. sharpened maybe once a year. But I just wow. I just make sure I steal it up each time I need it. In there is four tablespoons of... Uh, kiwi olive oil. We like that. Chopped onion, slice or oh, a stick of celery, which I just cut up into thin slices, and a carrot, which I diced. How do you get that so small? Because what you do is you peel a carrot. Yep. And I mean, I'd show you, but you know how it is. We're running time. out of time. Yeah. Yeah. You cut it into, <laughs> into strips, and then you chop it across, and you can do it all at once. Oh, That's going to go in there as well. Okay. So that, you know the the holy trinity. Olive oh, oil, yes. gar garlic, oh, um, onion, garlic. onion, celery, and carrot. Wow. That's the flavour base of this. So, yeah. what is there a special name for this? That's a sofrito. Sofrito. Yeah, it's the initial what, sort of what frying. What does sofrito mean? Oh, just that initial frying in olive oil. It can be okay. just onion, but it can be a mixture of things if you want to. Ah, yeah. that's really good. Hey, one. the other thing I've got here is some toasted um, fennel seeds, which I really like. They, I love the flavour of fennel. Toasting them really brings out the flavour, and not that I actually care, but 
fennel is very good for your digestion, so that's going to go in there as well. Awesome. And this pan. Oh, it's a cute little Saint Clair pan, and that's actually a blini pan wow. for making little little Russian Tiny. pancakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just perfect for doing uh, like toasting spices. Oh, that's a good yeah. idea. So that goes in there. Want to say hello also to Debbie Curtis, who's watching Debbie. tonight. Happy birthday. I hope you had hey. a great night on Sunday. That was the birthday party Happy we birthday. visited. Yep. Now, Debbie and I were chatting about some of the ingredients that are sometimes yep. used in your recipes. Yes. So, for example, she might not have something like these preserved lemons. So, what would be a good alternative? Oh, this. Just just use the, the zest off a fresh lemon. Great. Uh, it won't quite be the... Be Completely the same, but you'll still get that lovely lemony flavour. Excellent. There you go, Debbie. This is a very traditional Moroccan um, condiment. Preserved lemons. They're very good. Yeah, I love it too. But I'm just going to use the peel. Okay. So I'm going to throw that. Really? That, yeah. I'm not using that. That's just very salty and okay. sort of full of membranes. And I've said in the recipe to use a... Whoops. I've said in the recipe to use a large one. So I'm going to add a little bit more. So... I Can you preserve your own lemons as we well? We do it all the time. I had to go out and buy some today because wow. ran, we've run out. We get three kilos of the things. Wow. I love them. And, and I mean, at their most basic, they're just lemons, water, and salt. That's it. That's so cool. Oh, hello also to Jane Wan, who is watching. Jane, I Jane, hope you love you? this recipe. And Giovanna, who's watching as well. Great Giovanna. to have you guys. Yes. Ciao. It's really good to have you guys watching. Um, now, I'm just noticing there's a few other people who are watching, who have liked or watched tonight's show, including Emily Hiriki Agcock, Grace McVinney, who's watching. Oh, hello, Grace. My um, daughter. Yeah, great to have you guys watching. Thanks. Hope you've, if you've got any questions, feel free to uh, message in and ask. Yeah, good. Right, so that goes in there as well. And this soup came about, soup, stew, came about. Because I've got a really good friend who's a vegetarian, and she one, uh, once asked me, "Is there, what you know, what can I do? I, I want a pota lemony potatoey vegetarian recipe." And so I sort of lemony potato. I know, I know. It was That's weird unusual. to request, but yeah, it worked. And mm. I sort of dreamed this up, and you know, the rest is history. Now, a number of people have actually messaged us and asked about vegetarian recipes. So yeah. for those of you who are vegetarian, this is great. Is it a vegan option as well? No, well, it is if you don't put the yogurt in. Okay. There you I, go. I like it with yogurt at the end. Hang on, I just need a bit more oil in there. I'm going to put this on the stove and get this frying, and it'll take about 10 minutes to fry. Now, remember, team, if you've got questions, feel free to message in and ask. Happy to help you. And also, if you're looking for the recipe, if you haven't already got it, just head to Ray's website, raymcvinney.com. The camera's going to come through so you can have a look yeah. at what's going on. I'm going to turn. And Ray's. I'm and turning Ray's up kitchen. the um, heat here. And I haven't put any salt or anything in there yet, but we just need to get this sort of frying a bit. And then we're going to have to, we're going to, have to talk a bit. Monique, well, I've already got a question waiting for yeah. you from Jane Wan. Do you want oh, it yeah. now? Are yeah, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, wait on. Let me get this going first. Okay, and then sure. Jane, and then Jane yep. we'll talk to you. Hold on. Okay, just starting to happen now. I don't want it to burn, so I'm going to get it hot and then turn it down. Which is a really good thing to do, actually. I notice a lot of people, when they see something like, you know, put it on and fry gently or put it on and simmer, they put it on to a low heat. I've always thought that's what well, you do. Well, you stand there waiting forever for I the know, thing. It takes what you years. do is you get it hot, and then you turn it down. Uh, but you've got to get it hot first. And now, see, this is starting to fry. It's, uh, I don't uh, want I don't want frying this hot. Okay. But I want to get it hot before I turn it down. Of course. Now, a lot of people we've spoken to over the years have been asking you about induction. Is it something you really truly love? Yeah, yeah, I truly do. Look, we can't talk about this every time. I know, time. right? Yeah. But I know we've got some new viewers to the show. Oh, Hello okay. to you tonight. Yeah, I really do love induction. I mean, see how fast that, that happens? That is incredibly yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're very, very happy with induction. Never thought I would be... Totally I remember am. you fought against it for years. I know, I know, I know. Right. That <laughs> smells great. It smells good, doesn't it? Look, got... I would actually eat just that. It smells so good. Well, you could just put it on to, you know, grilled sourdough bread or something. Oh, and, with some like, cheese. With some cheese, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So we'll turn that down a bit. So you're going to leave hear that? that go down immediately? See it? the, the, um, the noise it's changed. making? It's changed immediately. That's how quick this induction is. So cooking really is a multi-sensory process, isn't totally. it? Totally. You got to you listen, you look, you taste, you smell, you feel. Amazing. That's what I think I love about cooking. You know, it's half my head, half my hands. That is cool. Yeah. 
Right. Hey guys, remember too, if you've got any questions, we're about to do a quick Q&A. So send your questions in now, Ray's happy right. to answer So that, I'm just going to leave that. I'll probably come back and give it a bit of a stir up. But about 10 minutes, I'd say. Okay. Actually, I'll turn it up a wee bit. And, yeah, and just, I don't actually want that to brown because I don't want a brown soup. So you've got to remind me that not to... I will remind you. Know, you. Yeah. Will we hear we get, we get talking. Now, we've got to talk to Jane. Yes, Jane. Jane. Jane sent in a great question. She said, Ray, can you please tell me how to stop chicken breast from going dry or chewy when frying? Uh, don't? Okay. That's a really a good, good question, question. Um, Jane. Uh, chicken breast, obviously it's meat, made up of, of connective tissue. If you shock that with really high temperatures and really like, you know, fry that really hard, all those connective tissues are going to seize up like that. Be more gentle with your chicken. Cook it a bit more slowly. It takes a long time to fry a chicken breast, but you just got to have patience. I was never a good, you know, you know, a good cook. Am I a good cook? You're a great cook. I was cook. never a good cook <laughs> until I learned patience. And some things you can't hurry. You just got to wait. So when you're, when you're frying your chicken um, breast, I'd probably dunk it in a bit of flour and oh. because it's a nice sort of you know, coating, coating brown, yeah, and, nice and crisp sort of, you know. Yeah. And then really, you just want to fry it, it gently. Oh, the flies are back. Oh, whoopsie! It's uh, the weather. <laughs> yeah, fry it gently um, until it's cooked. And and anything, any sort of frying like that, especially things like a chicken breast, it's a balance between getting the outside lovely and brown but not burnt, and the inside cooked. Mm -hmm. Fry it too quickly, you'll burn the outside and the inside oh, it won't be cooked. Yeah. You know, fry it too slowly and it'll probably get cooked but it won't brown. So, so it's does just... it come down to knowing knowing your stovetop? It comes down to... Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it comes down to um, basically paying attention to what's going on. And, you know, sometimes I'll give it a little turn up. Okay. And then I'll turn the heat down. Just, you know, depends where you're going. The thing about chicken breast is, is you do what restaurant chefs do which is you brown it, you make it look the way you want it to look like in the pan. Yes. And then you put the pan into the hot oven. And you finish it Shut in the oven. Up. Yeah, Serious? Yeah, yeah. Finish it in the hot oven. We do that. That's the only way you can do short order cookery That's really cool. fast and have lots of, you know, That's a orders. chef hack, yeah. team. It's a chef hack. Yeah. I like that. So let it cook in the oven. Don't have the oven too hot. If I was going to cook chicken breast, what would I have? 190? Yeah. And just let it cook through in the oven. Do you use fan fan bake or? It's always fan. Always bake. fan bake. I, uh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. Now, so I Jane can hear said, that. I just need to turn around. Okay, and no, that's cool. Stir it up. So Jane yeah. actually said she actually cuts it up for sauces as well. What do you cut up? Are you talking about your chicken? Do you have that with sauce or? If you could just clarify that, Jane, that would be amazing. Now, Debbie Curtis, who was the birthday girl on Sunday, she yep. said, "What a good idea to make the pan hot first, then turn it down." Uh, I'm doing that on my stir fry, so that would work for a stir fry as well. Stir fry, you want it really hot the whole time. Okay, there you go, Debbie. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll you'll stew it. That's yeah. a really good point, and that's what these sessions are about. You yeah. get to pick Ray's brains. Okay, so Jane wants said, thanks, awesome, Ray. Oh, uh, no problem, Jane. Yeah, hey, that that thing about brown it, make it look the way you want it to look, and then put it in the oven. You can do that with everything. That's how you can serve really fried point. fish. To like six people, ah. you know, because I mean, how could you ever you fry can, enough fish in one frying pan for like six people? You can't. So you just brown it side by side on an oven tray, finish it in the oven. I always wondered how they did that actually. Well, that's, that's what bistro cooks do. Ah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Abby Leaf has just said, hey guys, it's nice to see everyone safe despite the weather. Despite My the weather. My question mm. is, what is your most favorite meal to cook? Oh, my most favorite meal to cook. That's a, that's a really hard question, but... You've been asked this several times before. Several million times, yeah. actually. <laughs> I don't mind at all. What, you know what I really love? And it may sound really mundane, but it's one of those simple meals that if you pay real attention and get everything perfect, it's just the most delicious meal. It's a chicken, a beautiful organic chicken, stuffed with a breadcrumb, you know, oh, and, and yeah. yogurt stuffing. And... Roasted, so roast chicken with gravy that's made with a bit of white wine. Yeah. Um, Agri potatoes that are roasted in the oven in olive oil and so salt good. until crisp. 
And a green salad. I, 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 you know? I would and, probably and be there with you. Yeah. Stirring the chicken. Uh, stirring the chickpeas. Hold on. That is awesome. Um, and the thing about roast chicken, everyone loves roast chicken. You know, as long as you're not a vegetarian, <laughs> uh, because it's a little ceremony. You know. There is. It's and for sharing. You you got to slice it up, and yeah. you know, it's, it's nice. We don't have many things like that. So I was having a chat with <clears throat> a, a beautiful woman, Helen yeah. Thompson Carter. She does my the jewellery that I yeah. wear for these shows. The Banksy and jewellery. I know it's quite. Quite cool, yeah, right? yeah, it's quite yeah, cool, yeah, quite yeah. edgy. Um, and one of the things we were talking about is that there's a lot with with events. There's even a lot of that pomp and ceremony missing. And I yeah. think when you're doing something like a roast chicken or the, even the roast lamb that we had at Debbie Curtis's house for her birthday on Sunday, that whole sense of occasion. But isn't that that whole thing about you know home cooking? Um, you can go to a restaurant. That's different. You know, great. We love doing that. But home cooking is a bit of a ceremony. It is. You got to get people together, and you know, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. I'm just going to talk about what's going to happen next, and what's going to happen next is I got two cans of chickpeas here, okay, and yeah. I didn't bother using the drainings to make meringues or uh, Why would mayonnaise you? because I love eggs, so I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, so I've got. Did you wash them or no? Did, no? no, I just drained them. Yep. Yeah. And some chopped up. Agri potatoes. Okay. Which, I love the colour of agri potatoes. Yeah, they're yellow, aren't yeah, they? They're really nice. nice. Yeah. So I'm going to throw these into the pot right now because that's had long enough. Okay, Pete, you ready? We're going to bring Pete. the camera around so you guys yeah. can see. So All keep right. your questions coming through, team. Hang on, I'll just drain this off. Okay. Um, and the sofrito has had long enough. That onion was what I was worried about and because I wanted to get that onion soft. So in goes the chickpeas, and should, I've said two large potatoes, but I think that's enough of those. And a bit of a, turn the jug back on, give that a bit of a stir up. There's no salt or pepper in or anything in here yet. Electric jug's just coming to the boil, speed things up, because we don't want you waiting for this to go on forever. It smells great. And it does that. Rather nice. That's and great. just cover with w water. What I like about this recipe is there's no stock. You don't have to worry about stock. It's just the most simple vegetables put together. And, and they're all like creamy and sort of comfort food. With little... I was going to say, it's very hearty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. Um, but it has little flavour accents like the preserved lemon mm. and the fennel seeds and all that garlic, which I really love. So you kind of get a bit of a flavour hit in every mouthful. That's what we love. Oh, we yeah. love that. Our life is a constant <laughs> search for flavour. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I so much food around today has got no flavour. Mm. Okay, so look, that's coming to the boil already. And we're going to boil the hell out of this until that potato is soft. And when that potato is soft, which is going to take about, what, 10 minutes? which kind of should work, yeah. Yeah, it's great um, timing. Yeah. Okay, so that means, team, we've got 10 minutes of um, Q&A. Yeah. Wow, we'll couldn't get much more perfect than that. more water in there, that's enough. But this will make enough soup for four big hearty servings or six sort of entree sizes. Which is incredible, really. And it's really filling. Yeah, because yeah. there's not a huge amount of ingredients in there No, either. No, not And a, it's a really no. cost-effective recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And obviously you've got the protein in there from your chickpeas. Is Pro that correct? Protein from the chickpeas, yes. Wow. And um, we're going to put some yogurt on there as well. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's a good meal. Right. Is it boiling? Yes, it's boiling. Yes, it's boiling. All right, we'll go back over here. Okay, perfect. And we'll talk about what else goes into this. Okay. Now, Jane Wan has actually come back uh, as a follow-up from her question earlier about the chicken. Yeah. And so I thought we should have a quick chat about that. She said when she's cooking chicken breast, she said um, that she actually cuts up the chicken breast and fries it in the pan. Yeah. Then she <clears throat> adds sauce. What sort of sauce, Jane? Jane? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Um, we'll bring the camera back and yeah. ask her. Hey. Is it a tomato-based sauce or a creamy sauce? Well, one, what sort of sauce? One do you thing I would say, Jane, is why don't you use bone chicken thighs? Oh, Much yes. juicier than you know, Great um, point. chicken breast, which can be a bit dry. You know, mm. there's, there's no fat in there at all, and we love fat. Yeah. So yeah, chicken thighs are really good. Oh, that's boiling away really that's well. That's boiling away really well. Right. We'll turn Fantastic. That down a so bit. yeah, Jane, let us know your thoughts. 
Yeah, what, and, uh, what, what, if we can help, that would be yeah, great. Jane, what sauce are you using when you say you add sauce? Because mm. it maybe have you know something to do with why it's I don't know drying yeah. out. Yeah, it's kind of it's very interesting. So there you yeah. go. All right. So team, this is your time. If you've got some questions, Ray's going to show you what we're going to do next to the, the collective we. Yeah. What he's going to do next to the recipe. Well. Um, and I just want to talk about a couple of alternatives because I know there are some people who watch who aren't necessarily fans of coriander. Coriander. Use parsley. Just use some parsley instead. Oh, really? Uh, in this situation, you can. Not as yeah. a general rule, but in this situation, you can use parsley. And I want to couple of tablespoons of chopped coriander. The smell is so good in it this is. kitchen right now. <laughs> it's it pretty insane. It? Yeah, it's really I mean, good. Uh, it, it really is from such mundane, as you say. Yeah, just everyday ingredients. Ingredients, I mean, yeah. But the flavour hits, like this, the aromas in the kitchen are incredible. And I'd, I'd far rather be eating sort of, you know, cheap, simple, good products like this than any amount of expensive uh, processed food. Yep. Which, we were talking about trans fats. Actually, we? yes, this yeah. has just made the headlines. Pete, who is currently behind the camera and doing all the technical tonight, he read an article, I think it was in Stuff, or, or the New Zealand Herald, one of yeah, those publications, one of, one of those, yeah. about the fact that finally, after excessive testing, processed food and trans fats are not good for you. But so, didn't we know that? <laughs> I mean, well, isn't your philosophy about real food? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and I mean, when you think about trans fats, I mean, things like margarine, I won't eat anything with margarine in it. And most of the sweet, you know, sweet things that you buy, pastry, biscuits, cakes, all that stuff, all has ba baker's margarine, yeah, horrible stuff. I'd far rather eat a small amount of a natural product like butter mm. than any amount of... I mean, we're all over fat anyway. Just just eat food. You know, yeah, I agree. Mostly plants. Mostly plants. Not too much. Now, where does yeah. that philosophy come That's from? That's Michael Pollan. Oh, yeah. If you want to read more, like, just Google up Michael Pollan. He's a great writer, American. Yeah. How's that sound? Uh, coming then? along, yeah. We Doing may get, we might go over time a bit today because we've got to wait for this I hope you guys are okay with that. We might go a little yeah. bit over time yeah. today. I might just have a little taste of that and then I'm going to talk about what I'm doing next. Hold okay, on. fantastic. Now remember, team, if you've got any questions, please, please feel free to send them through. It doesn't just have to be about tonight's recipe. Mm. And if you want more recipes, there's a whole bunch loaded into Ray's website. Uh, we are launching his online e uh, cooking education or his online cooking school as well through there. So while you're on the website, raymcvinney.com, have a look at all the details because you're passionate about educating people, right? Um, not in any sort of evangelical way. I don't want to preach at you or anything <laughs> like that. I mean, you know, calm down here. <laughs> But what I do like doing is showing you how easy it is to eat good food. You know, food that is good for you. Because all food is good for you as long as it's like real food. Yeah. yeah. Don't eat processed food. It's not, yeah. not good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I went out into the garden, speaking of which, and got some rocket. Oh, that's your own. That's our own. Taste. That's uh, awesome. Just have a little taste to pull it off. Oh, wow. I know, so full of flavour. I love rocket. So I do love I. the nuttiness of it. That's what I like too. Mm. And I'm just going to really chop that really coarsely. I don't, oh, want wow. it, don't want it all chopped up because I want to be able to see that. And that lovely sort of peppery, nutty flavour mm. is going to go in that soup. Oh, that's the awesome. End. Yeah. There is nothing I love more than a rocket <clears throat> and freshly grated parmesan salad with a little bit of olive oil and some uh, fresh black pepper. Yeah, really, really simple. It is the tastiest thing not, I've ever not had. Not plain, because there's a big difference between plain yeah. and simple. Yeah. Yeah, simple. Simple food is probably harder to do yeah. than... Um, well, you can't hide. Well, simple. a lot of people don't get simple food. Mm. You know, they, th they think it's banal or is that it, they often say. Yeah. You know, oh, it's so, so um, underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you actually got to understand what simple food is. Simple food is really hard to do mm. because it's got to be perfect. Simple food, there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. You know, you... It's like really good coffee. That's why I drink yeah. a long black now. Oh. You can't hide yeah. when you're making a long black. Right. There's nowhere. You can't hide, mask it with lots of milk. It's the same thing. Exactly. Now, Belinda Falconer. Hello, Belinda. Nice to see you. She said, yes, eat butter. Real food. It's real food. It's, a, na you, it's a natural product yep. made out of cream. Oh, you know, maybe it. with a bit of salt. Yeah. Has and Abby, Abby Leaf just messaged in and she Abby? said, what is your favourite style of cooking? A great question. 
uh, baking wow. or sweet or savoury or curry. Sorry, I hope this makes sense. I know what you mean. People often ask me that, and there are so many different things to that you can make with food, which is one of the things we love about food, mm. that um, it depends how you feel. But what do I love? I love Italian, I like, Chi I like, I like Chinese, I like Japanese, mm. I like Middle Eastern. I like making bread. I, look, I make, I love I make my bread. own sauerkraut. I've just got the wickedest. Do you want to see the sauerkraut? Yeah, do you guys want to see Ray's sauerkraut? Because yeah. fermented foods are pretty popular right now too. Kombucha, sauerkraut, yeah. they're good for your gut too, right? That's incredible. Yeah, I made that a while wow. ago and it's, just, it's been sitting in the fridge and I just got it out yesterday. That is and so I cool. Had is it just, just cabbage? Cabbage and salt. That's it. Serious? Yep. Yep. It's extremely delicious. I, I really like it. Um, what, what did I have yesterday? I had melted cheese on toast with sauerkraut. Oh. It was so good. So again, yeah. simple food, yeah. party. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Checking the potatoes and okay. the thing here. Awesome. Keep the questions coming through, team. If there's any way we can help you with your culinary dramas or dilemmas. So that's a few that's minutes. That's what we're here to do. Got a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes and we're in business. What now, are we doing next? Well, the other thing that is going to... So what's going to happen is I'm going to put the chopped coriander. Okay. The chopped rocket. Rocket. It's going to go in there. And I've got some yogurt here. This is easy yo. I love making easy yo. It's made out of food. Yeah. You know? It's great. Um... And easy yo, when you work it out, I think I worked it out one day, it's, it's half the price of what you buy for yogurt. And really? of course, there's no no thickness, it's, it's, it's real yogurt. It's just real yogurt. Yeah, and when you um, take the top off sometimes, you'll get a bit of whey sitting on the top. You just I pull love that. that. Well, you just pull that off, which seems to be the thing that, that yogurt manufacturers are worried about, that people are going to see some whey, but which is why they put stabilizers and thickness. That's normal though, isn't it? Well, I just think that's huge. <clears throat> Part of me hugely underestimating mm. the public of New Zealand that mm. they don't understand that. Do you, actually, that's a good question. Do you guys make your own yogurt? Do you buy your own <coughs> yogurt? What do you prefer? That's a good question because I'm a huge yogurt fan. Yeah, I like yogurt. But I am very particular about the yogurt that I eat. And the week, a couple of weekends ago, I was trying some really good coconut yogurt. I haven't been a big fan of it before, but it's interesting. For a different Coconut flavor. Coconut yogurt's nice. Yeah, yeah, for a different flavor. <coughs> um, I'd really love to know if you do. And Belinda Falconer said, yes, love sauerkraut, must make some. Yes. If you Actually, if you go to my, to, um, my article in Byte magazine on byte.co.nz, there's a, just search it, but I've got the whole thing of how to make sauerkraut in there. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Great stuff, right? So that's really good. Fantastic. Okay. okay. Just and checking out Abby there. Leaf has just sent in another question. She said, in addition with the chicken theme, I love putting frozen chicken in the oven and having the juices drip down into a tray and the skin <coughs> is nice and crispy and the chicken is tender. It's amazing. So she cooks from frozen. I would be... Camera's over camera's here. Camera's over here. I, uh, yeah, I would be very, very careful about cooking frozen chicken because if you don't cook it quite, you know, fully... You could be in give yourself food poisoning, so be really, really careful. And in fact, be really careful as far as with chicken in general. Yeah, with chicken in general, because of the camp full of thing. Yes, of course. Yeah, so you know. And Belinda Falconer just came back and said, "I <coughs> used to make easy yo, but I love raglan coconut yogurt." Well, that's what you that's should cool. um, eat then. <laughs> um, that just just that thing about chicken. I love chicken that. Uh, potatoes that have been cooked you know, oh, yeah. with the drippings from the chicken. That's, so good. Was, I think that was the first meal, dinner that I had when I was with my partner Jenny when we went to Paris. We had a breast, really? a breast chicken that had been cooked um, with potatoes. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was just delicious. I really loved it. When I was working on the TV channel, mm. the TV shopping channel, I had to demo a, an oven, <coughs> which was a rotisserie yep. oven. And it was so good because you could cook on the rotisserie and then underneath you had all that all the juices dripping yep. down. And it made the best roast potatoes because of all that All that juice. chicken fat. Flavoured chicken fat. Because you put garlic and everything oh, on the roast so chicken. Good. So good. Yeah, it's really, really good. Amazing. Right. Any other questions coming in, team? Remember, keep sending them through. This is an interactive session. It's all about you. Yeah, and so I'm, just, I'm checking know? the soup. I'm just waiting for these potatoes to cook because as soon as the potatoes are cooked... We're all good. Yeah. But so how not... do you know when the potatoes are ready? Well, look, I'm picking it up on the end of a spoon and cutting it with a knife. It took me years, <laughs> years and years to work out how you tested potatoes up. They were boiling potatoes. I was so bad at it. 
you know? Serious. Yeah. Pete's going to bring the camera yeah, around so you guys can so, see. I mean, the only way, like spaghetti or, you know, like pasta, the only way to do it is either taste it, or in the, in the case of potatoes, you see that's just a little bit, a little bit hard still. We'll just get that. Yeah, we're just going to have to keep talking, Monique. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. I've actually got a very interesting co uh, <coughs> question coming from Debbie Curtis. Debbie. She said, what do you suggest as an alternative for capsicums and salads? As I find I have bad dreams. And I have been told it's a nightshade food, but I love the colour. So are tomatoes. Wow. And potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. And eggplant. Oh, there you go. So they're all the same they're family. They're all a nightshade family. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, Capsicums and salads? I hate capsicums and salads. Really? Yeah, Do you eat them I, raw or you prefer them no, cooked? No, I kind of like them cooked. I like them roasted, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm with you on that. I'd just leave them out. Um, it was Debbie. Right? Yeah, it was Debbie. Yeah, Debbie, I'd leave them out. Because, what you know, who's got your arm twisted up your back to put capsicums in your salad? I wouldn't put them in. See, I like them. I eat them raw. I chop, chop them off. Yum, yum, yum. Mm, yeah. Yeah, but then I like a lot of I like of them roasted food. like the yeah. Italians do. You know? Actually, yeah. that's something we have done before. Um, we've done a roasted peppers recipe. Not that you'd like it, Debbie, but it is amazing. And what did you put on it? You had an anchovy on there. Oh, that was, that's a very... Um, that, well, you've got that recipe. Yeah, right? we've it's got on that the web. recipe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very traditional uh, Italian antipasto that comes from um, the area of Piemonte where my grandmother's family oh, yeah. came from and what it is is you, you get like a quarter of a capsicum so you've got this little boat shape and you put a wedge of tomato, a couple of slivers of garlic and an anchovy and then drizzle the hell out of it with plenty of uh, extra virgin olive oil yep. right into the oven and basically just cook it until it just starts to collapse. That's it's Take it delicious. Out. Don't try and eat it hot, just you know like Eat it warm as an antipasto. It's such a good recipe. Mm, yeah. I totally agree. It was delicious. Now, I don't even eat uh, anchovies, but I did try that when we made you that did. here. You did. Because yeah. the rule is you have to try it. You don't have you, to Yeah, like that's it. the rule in this house. You, you have got to try to, it. You don't have to eat it, but you've got to try it. Yeah, and it was actually amazingly good. So there you go, Debbie. I hope that helps. And let me know if you find a really good alternative and share it in Ray's community. How's the soup going, Chef? Well, I think we could probably um, move to the next stage. Oh, moving to the next stage Which means now. I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm basically going to just finish it here. Perfect. And, yeah. That is awesome. I don't know if you guys watching are all based here in Auckland or where you're from, but this weather is incredibly crazy. Something like this would make a great dinner right now. It would, but weather. I wouldn't eat that until there's very little steam coming of off course. it. Of course. Can you give me that potato masher? Oh, yes. And I, yeah, I didn't it's actually say this in the recipe, but often with these sorts of um, soups where there's no stock, you know, not a huge amount of um, sort of flavoured liquid, this is just water. If you just sort of give it a bit of a... Don't do it all, but squash a bit of it. That's probably enough. Just with the potato masher. Just break up those big lumps of it. You get that lovely sort of creamy, um, uh, lovely, excuse me, lovely creamy, take your kidneys out. I know, right. Time. Yeah. Uh, you get a lovely sort of creamy background to it, which is really nice. And it's amazing. look, that's, that's basically, you know, is it a stew? Is it a soup? Who cares? I it's taste look, good. I love soups I like this. And I want to put the coriander in there yum and the rocket I'm gonna give it a good stir that looks up actually incredible I have to say yep this is uh, you know so nice Giovanna what what do you reckon I can see you watching is this something that you would make is this something Ben could eat as well because I'd be really interested to see if this was something you would both eat. I think, look, it smells incredible. Smells good, but we need to taste it because you've got a lot of like bland things in there. Like They're creamy and they've got lots of lovely flavour. Ah, but, but do you need more salt? You need to salt them, yeah. Oops, so don't do it with a fork. No, fork's not ideal. No, do it. I just want to see where we're going with this because I put some salt in it before. Oh, yes, Belinda oh, yeah. said that she's a one-pot meal queen. Uh, we love one-pot meals. Less to clean yeah. up. And some white pepper. Okay. Why am I using white pepper? By Jingo's by Hokey. Yeah, and What's this is, that? well, if I put black pepper in here, it's going to look like I dropped something on the floor. It looked like dirt. Okay, perfect. So, this is a oh, pepper grinder. It smells great. And too. these, oops, let's take the rocket off my hand. 
Is he much these of a difference white in flavour? Um, these ones are sort of a bit more creamy and a, and a little bit not it's not too fiery, perhaps. Wow. They're still hot though. Oh, good. Yeah, excellent. So that is white pepper. We love that. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I've just put some pepper in there. Needs a little more salt. So Giovanna just messaged in and said, I'd love to make this, but unfortunately Ben wouldn't be out. Her partner Ben wouldn't be able to eat it. But your family, your mum, your sister, they would mm. love it. I know that for sure. Right. What's the origin of a recipe with all these sorts of ingredients like this? Is this kind of Middle Eastern with your with Kind your of lemon? out of my head, really. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll have that lemon and the lemon squeezer too, please. Perfect. Um, but yeah, sort of veering towards the Middle East, I'd say. Okay. I mean, chickpeas, you know? Or oh, India, I suppose. Yeah. Um, now, yep. I want, now, I want to make it more lemony. It's got the, the preserved lemon peel in there. Mm -hmm. but I want to put a bit of lemon juice in there as well. That's a very cool lemon squeezer. I just love this thing. It's Mexican. So really, good. really good. Now, speaking of, speaking about that whole recipe creation, mm. I have no idea about creating recipes. How do you come up with so many new recipes all the time? Because you're doing it for you, for bite, for yeah, everybody. Yeah. How do you do that? Do it when you're hungry. I mean, <laughs> cool. seriously. I mean, yeah. it's like going shopping at supermarket when you're yes. hungry. You just want to buy everything. Buy yeah. everything, okay. But you've got to be able to do it in your head. And I've had, I probably had enough experience to, can, I can imagine what tastes. Okay. Taste yeah. like in my head, and I know you sort of get a feel for what goes gotcha. together well. I mean, it's it's just like moving the furniture, really. It's all okay. mixed and match. So How it comes with experience. Yeah, it does really. Okay. Do you want that on there? I'll just put that. Actually, I'll put this on here, and I'll put the soup plate there, and that's a nice big Italian soup plate. That I like is that. Awesome. Yeah. And this is. The soup. Haven't that forgotten anything? I don't amazing. think so. I don't think so, apart from what do you do with the yogurt? Do you just put it on the y top? Yeah, you watch. I'll, I'll oh. just, just this up. Awesome. This tastes great, guys. How many of you uh, watching would actually make this at home? I hope so. If so, send us some thumbs or some hearts or some smiley faces and let us know if this right. is something you'd make in your kitchen. There. This is good food. This This is not expensive. But it's good quality, yeah. that, which is what I like about it. And I'm quite a fan of soup that you can eat it, yeah, like you too. bite through yeah. as well. As I said, as I've, uh, you know, just to repeat again, repeat again, yep. just to repeat, <laughs> um, don't try and eat this when it's really hot. Let it cool down. Awesome. You know, yeah, we've got yeah. some hearts and some thumbs coming through. So that means people are going to make it. Good. What we love is we love seeing what you've made. In fact, did you notice? Belinda Falconer made your um, Italian apple cake the other That's week. I right. tagged you yes, in. Well yes, done, Belinda. Yes, yes. How was yeah. that received? I hope you um, got a good response. It looked delicious. So you're going to put I've, I've yogurt? I've put yogurt on there because what I'm wanting to do now is make it even richer. Mm -hmm. And the yogurt's going to make it rich, but I'm going to put some more extra virgin olive oil oh, on it amazing. as well. Tastes good. Yeah, Tastes that looks really, great. really good. Restaurant quality, and, right? Which isn't necessarily better. No, but it looks. It's it just looks different, like something different, different in style, you know. Yeah. But I, I haven't done anything very, you know, clever to this. And a little more, Cory, Ander. Beautiful. Cory. Yep. Yep. Because you guys and are friends. And look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and there it the is. soup, really. So Belinda, Belinda said, um, I make my own recipes. I just use what veggies are in the fridge. We Good. love that. Yeah. Fresh and seasonal is the best, obviously. Um, and Belinda said, very well, we'll make it again. <clears throat> You're talking about the apple cake, I oh, hope? Oh, the apple cake's great. You yeah. can make that, that cake with pears. Oh, I want to try that. You could make it with peaches too, but Ooh. you better be quick because peaches are just about finished. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Hey, look, um, make the soup. This is good food. Yeah. Bon appetito. Oh, I like it. Yeah. And remember too, you send us your pictures. If you make something, we love to see what you're cooking. So send pictures into Ray's Facebook page or if you're watching on your Fix TV or Adesia, we want to know what you're up to. Share your recipes, share your family secrets. That's what this community is all about. Ray, that is awesome. Good. I really want to try it. So we're going to go off air. Thanks for joining us. Head to Ray's website yep. for recipes and have a great week. That's been great. Yeah, yeah, and you know, make the soup and as yeah. I said, buon appetito. Yeah. All right, time yeah. to go, guys. Have a fantastic yeah. week. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 6.30. Bye.